Hey YouTube, it's Katrina. Welcome to day 199 of the orbit. Because finals are coming up soon, I've started to study and catch up on homework that I, you know, haven't been able to keep up with because of everything. So I just have a little catching up to do. And I'm reading this book, Fourth Edition of Assessment of Childhood Disorders by Mash and Barkley. And I'm reading about eating disorders. So I guess I should say that this particular vlog is going to be educational and it's just going to be about various kinds of eating disorders, what the diagnostic criteria is. So if you don't think that you would like to hear something like that, um, I would say go check out yesterday's video. Also for the sake of this video, because there's so much information pertaining to individual eating disorders and um, it also varies depending on what studies you look at. If you are interested in further questions, you can always ask me in a comment below. Um, and I will happily research them for you and give you the answers, and the answers are probably already in this book. So put very simply, an eating disorder is a psychological disturbance in which a person will attempt to adapt their weight, control their weight, um, using maladaptive behaviors such as eating less or purging food from their body, also coupled with um, having a distorted body image um, or body satisfaction is not really there. In general, although they can occur in anybody, they're most common in women, especially adolescents, and the, you know, prognosis isn't the best that you would like it to be and it takes a long time to, to uh, recover from an eating disorder and it uh, it can have very severe negative effects on your body um, in addition to it being that the suicide rate is one of the highest out of all psychological disorders so the current manual that's in use by psychologists psychiatrists um, mental health clinicians it's called the DSM 4 TR and I'm going to start with the criteria the diagnostic criteria for anorexia nervosa and I'm gonna read it because there's no way I could memorize it a refusal to maintain body weight at or above a minimally normal weight for age and height for example weight loss leading to maintenance of body weight less than 85% of that expected or failure to make expected weight gain during period of growth leading to body weight, weight less than 85% of that expected. B. Intense fear of gaining weight or becoming fat even though underweight. C. Disturbance in the way one's body weight or shape is experienced, undue influence of body weight or shape on self-evaluation, or denial of the seriousness of the current low body weight. D. In postmenarchial females, amenorrhea which means the absence of at least three consecutive menstrual cycles. A woman is considered to have an amenorrhea if her periods occur only following hormone, for example, estrogen administration. And then there's two specific kinds of, um, I guess, sub-levels of anorexia nervosa, and that is the restricting type, which means that they will restrict the amount of food that they intake, um, and uh, doesn't regularly involve his or herself in the other kind of behavior that is the other sublevel, which would be binge eating or purging, which is using laxatives or extreme exercise, um, vomiting to get rid of the calories that the person has consumed. So just in that, some people get confused sometimes because they think, oh, if you binge and purge, then you are bulimic, but not necessarily. If you have, if you have the diagnostic criteria for anorexia in addition to bulimia, then you're considered anorexic um, until you reach, until you don't qualify for all of those things. And then if you still binge and purge and have enough criteria for bulimia, then it's bulimia. But that's not to say that bulimia is less serious. With that said, this is the dsm 4 tr criteria for bulimia nervosa. A. Recurrent episodes of binge eating. An episode of binge eating is characterized by both of the following. 1. 
eating in a discrete period of time, for example within any two hour period, an amount of food that is definitely larger than most people would eat during a similar period of time and under similar circumstances. Two, a sense of lack of control over eating during the episode, for example, a feeling that one cannot stop eating or control what or how much one is eating. B, recurrent inappropriate compensatory behavior in order to prevent weight gain, such as self-induced vomiting, misuse of laxatives, diuretics, enemas, or other medications, fasting, or ex excessive exercise. C, the binge eating and inappropriate compensatory behaviors both occur, on average, at least twice a week for three months. D. Self-evaluation is unduly, unduly influenced by body shape and weight. E. The disturbance does not occur exclusively during episodes of anorexia nervosa. And then specific, specific types of bulimia is purging type, uh, where the person regularly engaged in self-induced vomiting or the misuse of laxatives, diuretics, or enemas, and the other type is non-purging type, um, in which the person uses inappropriate compensatory behavior such as fasting, excessive exercise, or has not, um, but has not regularly engaged in those things involved in purging type. A relatively new kind of uh, uh, eating disorder is called binge eating disorder, and there's not very much information on it in comparison to anorexia or bulimia because it's a relatively recent. So here is the DSM-4 TR diagnostic criteria for binge eating disorder. A recurrent episodes of binge eating. An episode of binge eating is characterized by both of the following, um, which I mentioned already for um, bulimia, meaning eating in a discrete period of time, an amount of food that's definitely larger than most people would eat during a similar period of time under similar circumstances. Two, a lack of control over eating during the episode, like a feeling that you can't stop. B, the binge episodes are associated with three or more of the following. One, eating much more rapidly than normal. Two, eating until feeling uncomfortably full. Three, eating large amounts of food when not feeling physically hungry. Four, eating alone because of being embarrassed of how much one is eating. And five, feeling disgusted with oneself, depressed, or very guilty after overeating. C. Marked distress regarding binge eating is present. D. The binge eating occurs, on average, at least two days a week for six months. And then there's a special note. Uh, the method of determining frequency dif differs from that used for bulimia nervosa. Um, e. The binge eating is not associated with the regular use of inappropriate compensatory behaviors such as purging, fasting, excessive exercise, and does not occur exclusively during the course of anorexia nervosa or bulimia nervosa. So that's all of the dsm 4 tr criteria for those three kinds of eating disorders. But I have to say that there is a lot of conflicts, you know, uh, debate over diagnostic criteria. Like, where do you draw the line? You know, does everyone have to have all of these criteria or enough of these criteria. I mean, if somebody has everything except for one requirement to have anorexia nervosa, should they not be considered to need help? So that's pretty much it, guys. I know that that was a more serious vlog than I've ever done, um, just because I wanted to share with you what I'm currently learning about in school and my homework, what I'm going to be tested on. Um, as well as because I'm a psych student, I feel like, you know, this is a channel about psychology, books, my life, so this is a little piece of psychology. And I'm very happy to answer questions, and uh, I will see you guys tomorrow on day 200 of the orbit. And I think at this moment I am one subscriber away from 600. So, that's cool. Bye.